Hello everyone, God bless you. Glory be to God. In this message is calling you to the mountain top, calling you to the newness of life, talking about how to reach the mountain top. We are going through the valley. It is to help you to a new way of seeing, a new way of thinking, and a new way of doing things because it's time. I want to share with you a couple of more prophecies from Father's Heart's ministry. I think they really are in the vein and we would need to listen to that every day because it's coming with day-to-day instructions. How to walk this out, really to reach the mountaintop. We have days left, but the Lord don't want us to sit in passive wait. He wants us to walk with Him. So these are critical days indeed. Listen to the prophecies, please. The Father says today, embrace my processes and you will see my outcome. Know that for you, the process might be in the valley, but the outcome is in the mountain. I am going through daily of the valley. In this place, Amen. Nobody wants to build a kingdom here. Nobody understands what I'm talking about. Total worthiness. This is a Christian ministry. And the ministry we provide for the people is to be worldly, how to be worldly, how to take advantage of the resources of the government can offer, how to help the people to get uh, on disability. There is no movement to empower the people to walk in kingdom authority, in kingdom strength and power and provision. There is none. There are Bible studies, but people come here and unchange their life because they do fill the belly with the dinner they provide for Bible study. The progress I see in people is so snail slow that if this would be actually the way to build the kingdom, the kingdom would never come. So we have to do something very radical here, those who are called. So of course the Father is calling us to total dedication, total commitment, and He says, stir up the passion. That is the next, I believe. So let's go back to this. Everybody wants outcome, beloved, but very few comprehend my purposes in the valley, in the low places. There are shadows in the valley that reflects the purposes I am stepping you through that will not be clear to your understanding. On the mountain, however, you will see the big picture and the far horizon I have defined as your personal destiny. Both perspectives are authentic for your life. One shows your process, the other shows your outcome. In other words, the Lord is saying that what we are doing here, what we have to go through is the process. Of course, I am plugged into this system here and must turn it into the kingdom of God. That's the process. On the mountaintop, however, the Lord will show what the end result will be. That will motivate us and that will also give us direction, seeing the end result, which is glorious. We need that because down in this valley is really not, the, <laughs> it's not a pretty picture, right? We are struggling, we are in the warfare. I am always in conflict for one reason or another. Either in conflict within me how to do this or in conflict with my environment one way or the other. When the spirit in me rises up against iniquity, against uncleanness, against these spirits who are ruling and reigning in our territories, God forbid. So yes, it makes you want to fight and take authority and fight the good fight of faith and I'm doing it, but certainly it takes everything as I always say. And we have to rise up and rise above now when the kingdom manifestation comes. In other words, once the redemption comes and the Lord, and we will see it, then we are going to be walking in that kingdom authority and our new identity, knowing who we are and who we used to be in eternity. If we would just see that now, that we are sons and daughters of God, but also we are going to then have the resources. Everything will change because as soon as the separation takes place, the Lord will pump, can I use this word, pump that into the kingdom. The kingdom of God is riches and glory and honor. We are far from walking on streets of gold yet, but yet the, we, the Father will manifest His wealth because His children will not be impoverished. His children will not struggle. His children will not be homeless anymore. 
they will have more than enough. They will not be hungry, no matter if it's famine in the land. Of course, then his children are also the manifestation of unconditional love and giving. That's who the father is. He gave his son. He gave everything he could give to save us. And he will continue giving everything to save those who are yet can be saved. As he said, there might not be a second chance for many. But those who survived the big shaking at the beginning will be tossed into this fiery revival. I mean, still, some will reject him. But it's up to us, silly, how fast this fire is spreading. Now the Lord said clearly, I will not be pushed aside and my purposes will come. It, the only question is, will you be the part of it? So that really is a decision you have to make. Father, Father is giving you ev everything that you need for the empowerment. But if you do not look up now, if you do not wait in anticipation, if you do not be ready to run this race, if you do not be ready to explode from within, for let the Holy Spirit rule and reign through you, then what will happen to you? Would it be that you would be on the sidelines, not jumping into the river of life? So just jump. Whatever opportunity you will have, an open door, just jump. And wait for the redemption. Wait for the Father to show you what He has for you. This is all that matters right now. Know that I have made full provision in your life for this journey. Be instructed, therefore, and endure my process. Your promotion is in your patience. Oh God, I can testify to that. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I was just ready to leave this place and walk out. Because people can get away here with anything. Anything. Any sin. And we embrace them still. And the Lord just gave me a dream last night about this situation. It was that as I was struggling in the spirit with different issues, there was a river. But it wasn't the river we are used to see. It was the river in a building. So it just filled up the entire building. And so we were living in it, struggling in it, walking in it. It wasn't even swimming. It was more like just hanging in there and was face to face with a person. And it was a situation of a, I'm not saying fight, but it was like a, a disagreement or something to that effect. And that's really is the river of life. So what he was showing me that we are advancing in this river of life towards the kingdom, but I went against the flow. In other words, I left out the group of people I was with and just drifted to the other direction. And it came to that there was an end to this river. And I looked down where I was falling and I fell back down to a lower level. And underneath was still some swimming pool. <laughs> but it's not where I fell. Underneath was an auditorium or a classroom setting, basically, with no people in there. Then I woke up or, or got out of the dream. So I didn't crash, but really had to pray about this. What does this mean, Lord? And now I understand, as I'm making this video, actually, because at that time I had to let it go. I'm like, I don't understand this, but yes, I do. What it means is that we are flowing in this river of life. The Lord is washing us into our purposes in this struggle. And so if we stay with the flow, no matter how hard it is, we are going to get there. But if we get out of the flow and we go on our own way, like I said, I was ready to walk out, which I don't mean at all. It's just, I wish I could or something like that. I mean, the flesh rising. Then, um, then what you will experience is that you fall back to the lower level, to the third dimension. God is lifting you up and out and causing you to rise above and causing you to have the victory in the river of life. But if you go against the floor, it will kill you. You will not reach destiny. So what he was showing me that I'm falling back on a dry land and nobody's really there anymore. There is no one to teach there anymore. Everybody's advancing towards the kingdom or hiding during the tribulation. It is just a messy situation. And he gave me revelations on this river of life before. And he says, I'm going to wash you into my purposes. Really, there is not much you can do about it. Just like he said, in the valley, 
you don't see the process, but when you come above, then you will understand what is going on. And that's wonderful news. And we believe that to the Father, we just now really have to endure the process, like he says, we have to patiently endure the suffering. And it's not every day is equal. It is just that we have to, no matter what, we have to stay with it, stay with it. And I do see some change, of course, but it will be radical. When the time comes, it will be an explosion of revival. And we are not there yet, but it's coming very soon. Are you patiently endure step by step and cooperate with my process? You will surely come to the authentic outcome that I have promised you as your personal and unique destiny. Are you ready for change? Are you ready to see forward momentum and to come out of the stock place? Then get up and let us walk this out together for your future is now. See, the NASA has a document, the future is now. I will talk about that in the next message. They have a very different message, but the title of it is The Future is Now, My God. And here is one more message about passion. The Father says today, rise up in the pursuit of your passion. For you to do what I have called you to do, it is necessary to identify and commit to the passion that I have placed within you. Only those things that you are passionate about will afford you the motivation to do extraordinary things in fulfillment of your destiny. Understand what I am saying to you, says the Father. I am not the one who pulls down the strongholds. Listen to this. I have called you to pull down the strongholds, not only in the power of your faith, but by the intensity of your passion. You must do, and I have empowered you to do, exploits in my name through the passion that I have embedded in your heart and life. There is nothing passive about this. Religious thinking promotes passivity, and there is no passivity in the kingdom. There is no passivity that proceeds from my throne. Where does it come from then? It is a form of death. Passivity kills your dreams. And I am coming to your life this day to resurrect your dreams and your vision. I am pro-vision, says the Father. The narrative that I have planned for you is not the narrative of disappointment or deprivation. Reject the narrative of trauma and the narrative of despondency. The enemy wants to program your mind to churn out negativity and tragedy as the dominant narrative of your daily experience. <laughs> well, I'm dead now. Just today I'm on fire against evil. It was just, that just reached the top. Love those that suffer. Now, that I would like to see that people are suffering. I mean, oh gosh, not to want them to suffer. But I would see that they are willing to receive because they are in need. The greatest sin here is attitude. The selfish attitude that will turn the neck and harden the neck and people be absolutely unwilling to give in or to do something right or to reason. It has to be their ways and it's always shady. Those are shady ways. If you are not communicable, or if you are not teachable, if you are not someone who come in agreement to do good, you are shady. You are selfish. You will do selfish things all the time. Going around looking for what you can devour. Love those that suffer. Champion the cause of the suffering. Embrace and be a ministry of compassion towards those that suffer. But archer yourself in the narrative of the victory of the cross. Now see, when somebody is in real need, I lay down my life. Today a lady came in, needed help with many children. I mean, I gave her ten times as much as we usually give and do everything for her I can. So it's not that I don't have the heart to give. Indeed, I give, give, give. But I cannot stand the attitude of entitlement and then give me more and then demanding housing, demanding more. When you already lay down in your life to do absolutely nothing, just sit all day long, criticize people and make demands. So this evil attitude is really just making your spirit scream out, Father, make me love these people, show them the light. 
but they don't want the light. They like the darkness more than the light. So this shaking must come, must come, must be shaken away. There is no other way. So I praise God for that. Receive my instruction, says the Father. Refuse not allow any other voice but my voice and the voice of my word to be in ascendancy in your mind and your focus. Shake yourself from every other voice seeking to echo in the chambers of your heart, your emotions and your spirit. And this is for me too. I have to do that. I have to be able to overcome all this evil that is overtaking this place. This is the discipline of all those who do exploits in my name, says the Father. And it is the process that I call you to commit to in the season that you walk in at this time. So you see, we were waiting for the redemption, for the transfiguration, for the light. But we are going through the season of suffering in the valley of decision, in the shadow of the valley of death. Although I go through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil, Psalms 23, yes, that's what's happening, it's a process, it's not a pretty process, so we are now going into that, because as the shaking comes, now you really will see a lot of suffering, and then the compassion rise, so the Lord also is talking about that, and the mountaintop experience is the actual redemption. I even remember for one of the visions the Lord gave me years ago, in worship and I was lifting my hand in worship and I saw myself on the mountain top and I knew that I was face to face with God but all I have seen is the firmament and there was no sun because of the brightness of his presence so this is a new way of seeing things I hope so yes we, we are waiting for our redemption but again no passivity we have to put our hands to the plow and and make that commitment for the kingdom and plant the seeds for the kingdom and work over it's not easy but we must do it many are called you are chosen god bless you